Hey collectors, welcome to Star Wars Collected. I'm Jonathan. If you're new here, I hope you consider sticking around and subscribing. But if you've been here before, I want you to hit that like button like it's Mace Windu letting you onto the council but not giving you the rank of master because what I have for you guys today are two items from Shop Disney, including Mace Windu's Clone Troopers helmets. May the 4th, 2024 has come and gone, but along with that came a lot of new merchandise from a lot of our favorite vendors, Hot Toys, Sideshow, all these different people that we love, but it also included Disney and Disney Parks. And one of the items that came out that I think everyone was really excited about was a new clone trooper helmet. And this was something that showed up on May the 4th, along with a bunch of other cool stuff out there. There is a new T-16 Skyhopper that everyone's kind of going nuts about. It's a measly 40 bucks in the park, and it is a super cool looking replica. I don't have that yet. I've been watching that on the secondary market, but it's going for a little bit more than what I want to spend so far. But what I did pick up was the new clone trooper helmet. Now this is retailing in the parks, I believe for $99, but I saw it come out and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, Shop Disney every once in a while though, they run a promotion here and there where you can get a little bit of a discount on it. So well, I'll give it some time. I'll wait, you know, don't have to have it tomorrow. A few days later, they run a 25% off thing as long as you buy a, beyond a certain threshold and it was eligible. It was one of the few Star Wars items actually that was new that was eligible. So. I mean, it was just a sign, I had to do it. So uh, this is the 187th clone trooper. Uh, I was born in 1987, so I like that this is 187th. I think it's kind of cool. This looks a lot like the Black Series helmet, but is not the Black Series helmet. Uh, the Black Series clone trooper helmet is one of the few that I do not own. Uh, I've got a lot of clones already and it just hasn't been one that I've picked up. This is similar, but not the same. If you've never seen one of these boxes close before, it is so cool. I've seen this on a couple other things that they've done. It is all this little teeny tiny iconography of Darth Vader's helmet and K2SO and the Millennium Falcon, X-Wings and AT-ATs. And you have all these different rebel ships. You have like the Emperor's window on here as well. You have some lightsabers, some speeders, some helmets. I mean, it's just super cool iconography all throughout. And it's done in something called spot varnish, which is where some of it's glossy, some of it's not glossy. So it's kind of just like ghosted onto there. So I'm not a big box person, but when you take the extra time to make your box look this special, it's worth noting. Let's take a little quick tour of the box here. It says 187th Legion clone trooper here on the front, voice changing helmet with sound effects. I don't care a lot about the sound effects personally, but that is fun, especially when this is something that's being sold at the park. So we're gonna go ahead and cut her open here. And as we move the box around, you can see that it's giving us a couple different views of the different sides. And then a lot more information here on the back. Interior padding included, full scale adult helmet, voice changing effect, and and real character phrases. Now I've unboxed many, many Black Series helmets before. So if you're interested in a Black Series helmet, make sure you check out my channel because we're gonna have probably the one you're looking for on there. Uh, so far this looks similar, but different. The Black Series ones have had more of a hinged box. So again, this looks a lot like it is the Hasbro Black Series helmet but it does not seem to be that. And I like that this is an adult size one. Disney parks, of course, they make some stuff for kids, but I'm a man and I want man stuff too. So we're gonna go ahead and take everything out here. That is it. There's nothing else left in the bottom of here. Just a little bit of padding as you can see. We've got a couple little black pads and some circles. Looks like little Velcro circles here. And it looks like they're gonna let us DIY that part. So when you buy a Black Series helmet, typically these little guys are stuck already on the inside. And you kind of line these up, these pads up with it and you plop those on there. There's a side here that is going to attach to this Velcro when you get it in there, but they're leaving it up to you on this one. So you can kind of pad it to how you think are going to be more comfortable. Taking the plastic top off here. Okay, so let's take a little look here. I feel like right off the bat, it's a really good size. It's not too big, it's not too small. You know, I've been collecting helmets for a long time. I've got well over a hundred of them. Uh, and one of the downsides of kind of like buying some helmets from this person, buying some helmets from that person, is that sometimes the scale is just a little bit different. So I have some that I feel are kind of too big. I have some that I feel are a little too small. I think this right here is just about the right size to me. So let's move around here a little bit. This is using a gloss white. I don't know what the answer is. Uh, you know, I've got some that are gloss white. I have some that are more of a matte or a satin finish. Uh, you know, when the clones uh, come out and they're fresh, a lot of times they're called shinies. Um, so I don't know, in, in my mind, it should be gloss, but I have plenty that are also in matte and satin. 
and that looks right too. So hop down in the comments, let me know what you think. Is this supposed to be a glossy finish or a more of a matte or satin finish? That being said, there are some parts on here that are in that sort of satin finish. So the purple highlight here on the nose and some of these stripes. And we've got some body damage up here as far as little nicks and stuff. Now those nicks are in gloss, not ideal. You know, probably not gonna have a little chip on your helmet that isn't also shiny considering that's usually a top coat type thing. But uh, the colors I actually like a lot more in person. When I was seeing this online, I was a little afraid that it might look a little cartoonish with the kind of the turquoise blue or a teal. And then you've got the purple. It could have been a bit much, especially if these were really, really saturated. But right here, they're really not looking too bad. This has recessed stripes here on the side. You know, most of the time those are rendered with stickers, but when they started making Rogue One, they made those into actual parts of the helmet. And it looks like they've now carried that over into how they're making this clone trooper helmet here as well. But overall looking pretty good. There's a little tiny seam line that I'm seeing right here, but it's pretty well hidden, quite honestly. There's some more that come down in here. I wish I could maybe tuck that one more into this area here, but they got to do what they got to do to be able to make these things and to offer them at what I think is a pretty good price, pretty good value. So let's move around the back here. You're going to see there's a little bit of a rusty color going on here. That's some nice little added effects. And one of these sides, yep, this one right here is an actual physical button. So when you click that, it goes in and that's what's supposed to be making the noises. This side over here does not click in and looks like it actually sticks out a little less than this one. So this one being a physical button, it is sticking out just a little bit more, but this is how you should do it. You should hide the play features. You should hide the buttons. You're not going to see an exposed battery panel on the back here. I have a review of the Scout Trooper helmet that I still get comments to this day. People being like, I don't understand why you're so critical of this helmet. And it's because you didn't have to make a giant battery panel on the outside. I am seeing up here that there are little slots and this is probably where the sound comes out would be my guess. And that is not something I've seen before. Could probably do without that, but not very noticeable. There's just a little tiny slot hidden here and one over here on this side as well. Moving on the outside, noticing that on the back, here some people when they make this these have little teeny tiny lines on it almost like it's a dial and this one doesn't have that so that's kind of interesting they made a choice there and a lot of times this piece right here this is rendered in just sort of a straight black and there is sort of like a little indentation here now, a lot of times this is rendered as being like striped in some way there's some detail here going on here the one thing that i would say kind of stood out to me even before buying it as sort of like a uh, kind of wish I didn't know it that way, was this line right here. Um, that is because this helmet doesn't actually fit on someone's head. Uh, so all the clone troopers, of course, in Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, uh, were rendered. They were not real people. Um, so anytime you saw a full clone trooper, it was fake. It was made by a computer. Um, so someone's head doesn't actually fit inside of here as far as fitting through the neck seal. So when prop makers started making this, they either made them larger or made the neck seal uh, space underneath much larger or a couple people invented cleverly uh, a way to take the back of the helmet off and be able to slip your head inside of it. Now, commonly that runs up against this area here around up into this, and then they hide that seam going across the back here and over and you never even notice it. For this piece, they decided that they weren't gonna do that. They were gonna kind of run it parallel with part of this line and then just go straight up into here. So you have this line here on the side that's a little bit more noticeable than what would be ideal. But that means you can kind of pull this apart and it has a little bit of elasticity and that allows you to then snap your head into it and then let go and let it snap on. I do worry like whether it'll be tight enough over time if someone actually is taking this on and off, but uh, not a bad solution to that concept. Moving along here to the inside, you have some little cutouts here where those vents are, which is kind of interesting. I don't think they're meant to be practical as far as ventilation goes, but there are sort of little cutouts here and little cutouts over here. You have this microphone thing here in the front. This is part of the voice changing aspect of it. You've got a little nose guard inside of here to help it sit a little bit easier. And of course, very little tiny eyes. These helmets are notoriously difficult to see out of. And in the bottom there is a hidden battery panel box. Uh, again, still get flack for my uh, Scout Trooper review in which I said they could have done it better. They didn't have to put it on the outside. They could have hidden it on the inside. And here we go with Disney Parks doing it that way, which is nice to see. This texture on the inside is reminiscent of the Black Series helmets that I've seen before. So it's always curious to me. When Disney makes a helmet, I'm always wondering like, did Hasbro help you make this? Uh, is this a partnership with you guys? Let's go ahead and I will pop this on for you guys. A lot of people ask me, is that helmet wearable? And to me, these helmets are something that I put on a shelf. It's not something that I'm gonna put on my head and then go mow the lawn, but let's take a look here. All right, so the helmet is on. I can 
can actually see out of this. It is very dark and I don't have a lot of view, but overall I can actually see the thing is sitting on my nose. This is lining up with my eyes. I don't really feel like I had to expand this back part too far to fit on and off either. And as far as helmets go, it's actually not too hot in here, not, at least not immediately. It might fog up in time, but there are uh, actual vents here. I can see light coming in, so not bad. This moving part here, I would say is not so much to like get it on your head as much as it's to kind of like help you get over this nose thing. I would say it's getting sort of tighter at the top of the head. A lot of my clone trooper helmets go in further than this. You know, a lot of times this rounds off pretty much completely here. A lot of times these kind of continue on. This kind of comes all in a little bit more. So they are leaving you a larger hole here to fit your head into. Let's talk about some of those electronic features. I'm gonna hold up to my microphone here while we go through a couple of the different sounds. We're completely exposed! Go, go, go! The mission always comes first, sir. I've got a bad feeling about this. We've got to stop him! Ah! Look out! Eat laser clankers! So there's a couple of the uh, sound clips from that. I couldn't quite tell whether that was D. Bradley Baker or not. It certainly wasn't Tamora Morrison. Um, it would make sense that they would, you know, contract him and have him do a couple things or just pull it out of Clone Wars episodes or the Bad Batch or something. But uh, I didn't quite recognize that that couldn't quite right, but that could just be the sound of the speakers. Um, on the inside here, they actually came with batteries pre-built into it. So if you've been watching me for a while, you know I'm not the biggest fan of leaving batteries in your stuff. They tend to corrode over time. So I would recommend removing those. Uh, but they do come installed, which is kind of nice. And you have a couple different modes. Uh, there's an off mode. There's one that has kind of the universal power symbol on it, which I think is maybe just sort of giving you the option to then hit this button over here. And the other one is the voice changing mode, which I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. It's a lot of static kind of coming out of my voice when I talk, kind of weird. Not really sure whether this is worth it or not, but you guys will have to be the judge of that. It's sort of just stuck on making noise at this point. I'm not really sure what the point of that is. But for my purposes, I'm going to take this helmet and I'm going to put it on a helmet stand and I'm going to put it on a shelf and it's gonna look very pretty. So while the electronic features are interesting and I'm sure for some they get excited about that, I think for most people it's gonna be a display piece and I think it displays pretty well. And before you go, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this as well. I love one-to-one -one scale props as much as I love helmets. So when I saw that this little prop was out, I thought this might be a cool opportunity to pick one up. This is an ID9 Seeker Droid. Let's go ahead and open it up. This has that same cool box design that the helmet does with all sort of the ghosted iconography on it. There's a little try me button here. And it lights up and it makes all kinds of droid noises. It has a little uh, wrist piece that you can wear and it's actually meant to be uh, a wearable of all things. I feel like this has become a very big Disney park thing. So this is the shoulder piece that you can use. This goes underneath your shirt here like this and there's a magnet built in and you kind of put that on top and that is a mounting point then for your droid. There's also this wrist piece which uh, when you click it, it has different uh, commands and uh, allows you to then control your droid and have it do different things. All right, we are about to be free here, I think. And there's also a little antenna. And there we go. So you've got uh, two kind of little shorter arms here and then three longer ones. Maybe hit this thing with a little bit of weathering and kind of uh, bring out some of these highlights and then also go through and add just a tiny touch of silver paint here and there and kind of get that cool, uh, you know, that cool aged effect. And there we go. Uh, this guy has little batteries pre-installed and if I were going to wear my little wrist communicator here, I could push in the right buttons. Seems to be very talkative in a very like <laughs> odd voice. Not a voice that I would usually put on a droid. Pretty cool overall. I mean, honestly, like if I was a kid and I was walking around the park and I had something like this, man, I'd feel pretty boss. You can change just the color of the lights here if you want to. That's cool. And there's a little light down here. I mean, pretty cool. I wish the sounds that it made were what I consider more of a droid sound. I don't know if, if this droid makes those kind of noises and I've just missed that here in Canon, but the ID9 kind of sounds like a sleepy stoner droid to me right now. And I would probably would have preferred droid sounds to sound more a little bit more like R2-D2 or uh, mouse droid or, uh, you know, shoot the Imperial Probe droid makes some really cool noises as well. 
But uh, overall, a uh, pretty cool little addition to the one-to-one -one collection here. Well, collectors, there you have it. This is the 187 Clone Trooper helmet, Mace Windu's boys. Overall, I think it's pretty good. I think if you've been satisfied with the Hasbro Black Series collection and you like that kind of price point of you know $100 or just south of $100, like how I got mine, I think this is a pretty cool, solid addition. I don't love this little crack here on the side, but that's kind of my only gripe other than, you know, I kind of wish that some of these pieces were done in a slightly different way. I don't necessarily need these little gaps for the speakers. I'm noticing one here on the side as well, but overall, it's gonna make a good display piece. And this little guy does a whole hell of a lot more than I expected him to. Oh, I don't love what the sounds that it makes, but uh, I think it looks really cool. It makes a lot of cool noises, and I might just start wearing this around uh, when I go to work and things like that. Collectors, if you like Star Wars, if you like things like one-to-one -one helmets, one-to-one -one scale props, you like hot toys and sideshow and lightsabers, and uh, I've got tons of stuff here behind the camera. I've got a whole lot more helmets over here to look at. We've got some RS prop masters coming up, some Denuo Novo and Novo stuff. Uh, if you like things like that, you're in the right spot. Make sure you subscribe. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram. It's a place where you and I can interact a little bit more directly. I have a lot of fun with you guys on there, making polls and reacting to new products and little jokes and things like that. Uh, I have a good time getting to know all of you on there. Uh, but other than that, that's it for today. Check these guys both out if you're interested. I think they're pretty cool. You can get them at shopdisney.com. All right, see ya.